these numbers are starting to scare me. So what's the difference between that? I allotted 200 and already spent 173. So that means I have $27 left for this pay period in order to stay in alignment with my monthly overview. I messed this up because I wasn't paying attention because of the dogs. Okay, hold on, I gotta fix that. You guys are probably like, no, you're not doing it right. Hey future millionaires, it's your girl Carrie and welcome to my money tree. Here we talk all things finance, we create budget breakdowns, complete savings challenges, increase our credit score, and find new ways to become financially free. If this sounds like something interesting to you, please hit that subscribe button, join the family, and let's grow together. I wanna give a huge shout out and a thank you to all of my subscribers. I am so grateful for you guys for the love and support and the comments, the likes. It, it, it means a lot to me on this journey. So thank you guys so much. So today, 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 we're going to create our second pay period budget for the month of September. And in order to do that, I am on a variable income. So it is important that I close out the first pay period budget breakdown to see the difference between what the estimated numbers were that I allotted for versus what the actual numbers are. And we're also gonna chit chat about the five reasons why it's so important to set goals. So let's get into it. Okay, so second bi-weekly budget breakdown. Um, before we get into writing the income, expenses, bills, and savings and everything, we're going to close out the first budget breakdown. So I wrote a little note here of the different steps to take to make sure I'm not skipping anything and then that all my numbers make sense. So if you guys want, you can kind of use the same concept when you're checking in or closing out your budgets. I just check my income deposits. So I do this on my phone or on my computer. I see, you know, the amounts that I was paid for my side hustle and my job and then I write them in there. So this is the estimated amount and then this will be the actual amount. So my job, well this was the actual amount because I was paid on the first. So 963.31 and then side hustle I estimated 120 but it was really $90. So there's a little bit of a difference there, $30 difference. And then rollover and bonus, that was from the last pay period. So so there's nothing for these right now. Then we go over bills paid. So I just go in and check off everything to make sure the bill was paid and there's nothing that's still lingering or that I have to worry about. Most of these are on auto pay as you can see. So I typically don't have to worry about it. I just like to go in and check. So everything did come out except Ava, which is an app that I use to increase my credit score. So for different subscriptions that you already pay for, like Canva or Netflix, you use the, the Ava app and Ava pays them to subscriptions for me. And, those, and then they report those payments to the credit bureaus so that I my credit increases for having consistent payments. Now that did not come out because again, I pay Netflix and Canva. And what I realized was they come out in, it comes out in one payment of $20 on the 16th. So I just crossed this off and I'm gonna actually have to add that in for this second pay period budget. Uh, and then everything else did come out. And then I go through expenses paid. So my expenses are home supplies, pets, beauty, one-time bills, kids and food so these are just estimated amounts and then what I do is I keep a daily tracker I write the date the category of what I spent money on and the amount and then at the end of the pay period I go through and I just add up the different categories and see what the actual amounts were so we're gonna add in these actual amounts now So I just wrote this on a separate piece of paper and then I'll throw this away, but this I keep, you know, for my records. So let's see. 
brown paper. So for home supplies, it was $34 total. Pets, it was $28. Beauty was uh, $264.21. And that is way over budget, and that's because I did treat me and my daughter to get our nails done. I received a bonus from work for $300, so I typically do not spend money to get my nails done, um, but we did, so that's why that's way over budget. Uh, and then we have one-time bills, which was $172.73. So one-time bills is kind of just like some people may have it as miscellaneous or like a buffer amount in case something comes up and it's unexpected. So for me this month, that was for my computer. It got a virus and it was running slow and I needed to have that fixed and more memory added to it. So that was unexpected. And my computer is where I edit videos and such, so it, it is important to have that up and running, so I needed to pay that amount. And then kids, I allotted $40, but it was 28. So I allotted $35 for food, and it was really 183.76. Now this isn't my groceries, this is just fast food. And I typically don't like to spend much on fast food because I really don't have it in the budget to spend fast food and it's no good for you, honestly. But sometimes stuff happens and we have to. So that's why I did like to allot something, but this is a little ridiculous. I have to bring it in because we can't be spending that much. And you will see that I don't have an amount allotted for groceries because I do receive state benefits. So these were the actual amounts. And then what I'm going to do is I go in and this is my monthly overview. So as you can see, home supplies, I was like $20 under, which is great. So that can roll over to this pay period, the second one that we're about to do. Um, so let's actually put plus 20 pets is minus 11 beauty woo, beauty 264 21 minus 50 so negative 214 oh, 21 one time bills so it was 172.73 minus 66. So it was really $106.73 negative. This is really sloppy, lovely. Um, kids, it was $12 in the positive and food. These numbers are starting to scare me was negative 148.76. Okay, so this is what the actual numbers are, but as you can see, for my monthly overview, I have more than just $54 for the month. This was just for the first week. So technically, I had 160 for the month. So the first week I've spent 34 pets, was 28 beauty 264.21 I think I'm just gonna like round them so I don't have to put the cents one time bills 172 let's put it to 173 kids 28 and food was 184 so as you can see, this is what I spent for the first pay period. Um, for home supplies, I allotted 160 and I spent 34. So I have a nice amount for wiggle room for the second pay period. Actually, let's see what I have. So this will be the number that we have to add for our expenses for the second pay period. So home supplies will be 126. All right, let's write expenses here. 
home supplies. We have left 126. And then we'll write in the actual amounts after we do our check-in at the end of the pay period. Pets, um, so I allotted 50, but it was really 28. So that leaves me with $22. Oops. And then beauty, 264 minus 150. Sorry if you guys can hear my kids and dogs in the background. Everyone is home and my house is crazy. $114. Um, One-time bills. So what's the difference between that? I allotted 200 and already spent 173. So that means I have $27 left for this pay period in order to stay in alignment with my monthly overview. Um, kids, I, I allotted 120 and I spent 28. So that's $92 left. And then food. So I allotted 105, but I spent 184. So I'm negative 79. Wait, did I do beauty? What the hell? I messed this up because I wasn't paying attention because of the dogs. Okay, hold on. I got to fix that food. You guys are probably like, no, you're not doing it right. So food was negative. So I'm negative. So I don't have anything to spend for food. So zero. Um... Let me just make sure now that I'm looking that these went right. Okay, this was under, under. So the only thing was beauty. Okay, so it was really supposed to be 150 minus 264. So $114. Oh, that's what I did. So I was negative. So I have zero dollars for beauty. Okay. Um, so that's my expenses. So next thing, where's my little breakdown? Okay, so we looked at our income, our bills, our expenses, um, the amount in the account now. So that I just checked to make sure all of my savings money is good to go. There's no issues with that. The money that's in my Chime account, which I use to pay my credit cards to make sure that's all in there and them expenses were paid. And everything is good with that, which I can't do in front of you guys because it's all personal information and I do on the phone anyway. And then um, my credit card charges. So let's see, where are my credit card charges? Okay, so here. My gas reimbursement, I have yet to receive yet for this pay period which is always fun when you don't get your money. And um, let's see, my expenses. Okay, so Open Sky, actually it'll be easier to look here. So Open Sky, these two payments came out. So that's good to go. That was on the 14th. And now the 22nd, now that my neighbor's mowing his lawn. Sorry for all the background noise. I hope you guys can deal with it. I'm sure a lot of you are mothers and have to multitask and hear a bunch of noises anyway. <laughs> um, let me see. So the 22nd will be Capital One for $27.06. Okay, so for my Capital One, I'm just going to write a note that I have to um, pay pay that on what date and I also have to transfer the gas reimbursement money when it comes in to Chime. 
So when I added up all my daily expenses, I also add in my gas that I pay so I can keep track. So after I added all that up, that total was $237.60. So transfer $237.60 to Chime. And I know that is for gas. So that's separate. But I have to wait for my gas reimbursement to come in. So actually, let me write that here so I know what the amount is when it comes in. And it should be a number very similar to this or over. And I'm sorry, guys. I didn't do a video on my first pay period because I was having technical difficulties with my computer, which is why I had to pay an expense. And by the time I got it back, it's already the second um, budget period. So... I figured I'm just going to skip it and we'll just start with this. I crossed a bunch of stuff out because initially when I did my monthly overview, as you can see on the calendar, um, there's three pay, uh, there's three paydays for this month of September. The last payday is on the 29th and I initially was going to add that as my pay for September, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use this for October, so I'm not even gonna count this as a pay period for the month of September. It's just these two. So that's what I did. I crossed off um, that third paycheck because I'm gonna use that for October. So I had to change my estimated income amount from I think it was like 3,300 to 2,400. And I had to cross off this, um, the date, the 29th, because I'm not going to use that. That will be for October. Cross this off. And what else did I have to adjust? The bills total stays the same. So my overview, this actually will change. Oh, no, wait. I think this is the overview for all the bills. This estimated rollover, though, this will change, too, because... This was a number that I was, that would have been if the other paycheck was in there. Um, so yeah, the only thing for sinking funds would, that's going to be a different is because I allotted $33 per check, which makes three checks, it would be $99. And the same for Christmas, I allotted $100 per check, which would be $300. i am still going to stick with them two amounts, but I'm just going to keep it um as two checks instead of three so i put in 33 for this one and 133 for the emergency for the first um bi-weekly budget breakdown and 100 for christmas for this budget breakdown as well so that means for sinking funds for this pay period i just have to do the difference which which is 66 dollars for emergency and $200 for Christmas. So I'm going to add that in when I when I write everything in. So I'm going to do a voiceover now. I'm just going to add my income. I'm pretty much going to add everything that is here for the first bi-weekly budget breakdown, but it's going to be the numbers for the second bi-weekly budget breakdown. So we'll do the income, the bills, the um, amounts, the dates, whether they're auto pay or manual, uh, and then my where our expenses we already did, and then I'll add the sinkings and savings funds. And if there's any notes that I need to remember, I'll add that here as well. So let's get into the reasons why setting goals is so important. So there is a quote by a guy named Brian Tracy that he says, until you commit your goals to paper, you have intentions that are seeds without soil. So if you're someone that struggles to find a clear path to financial success, but you know that you can achieve more than what you have to show for, then keep watching. So you may have these ideas or seeds of ways to financially improve your life, but what seems to be missing is the soil that will allow these seeds to grow. So this is where clearly defined and intentional goals act as the soil to your seeds. 
it's important to have a dream of how you want your life to be but having a dream is not enough you have to have goals that are actionable and realistic to achieve those dreams so here are five reasons why you need to start setting goals first they allow you to focus and zero in on your daily and weekly tasks so that you're not wasting time or energy being idle um, or by having scattered energy and wandering aimlessly. It's much easier to reach your goals when you know what you want to achieve and when so that you can be intentional with your time, your money, and your actions. This intentional effort will move one step closer towards your goals that much faster than if you have no goals set and you only have a dream. So the second reason having goals is so important is it helps you measure your progress. When you have daily and weekly tasks to accomplish, you can clearly check off these completed tasks that are helping you reach your goal. So it will not only help you keep track of what tasks and goals that you have to accomplish, but it will also show you how and what else needs to be done until your goal is completed. When you don't have a goal, then you can't be intentional with your time, money, or your energy. And therefore, it makes it impossible to keep track of what steps you have to take to achieve those goals or to even see how far that you've come. Your goal is a reference point to see your benchmarks that of your progress and whether you're moving in the right direction or you're staying stagnant. The third reason why setting goals is so important, they keep you motivated. They keep you motivated to keep going when things get tough and when you face challenges along the way. When you are able to see the progress that you've made, it's easier to stay the course when you track your work that you've put in the, thus far. There's always going to be bumps in the road throughout life. And when you are able to see that you've gotten over those bumps, it builds a mental strength, a grit, and a resilience. It's like a snowball effect where your energy grows stronger and more determined to achieve those goals because you know that nothing can stop you. Another reason is that goals help curb procrastination. Procrastinating is inevitable and everyone does it at some point or another. Procrastination isn't a problem in small doses, but without goals, it can easily, you can easily get distracted and procrastinate more often than you would like. When this is done too often, it slows or even stops your progress forward. If you understand that procrastination typically happens when you're under stress, then you can begin to change how you handle the stress. It's important to know that doing nothing can be more stressful than having too much to do because this is when you feel powerless and useless to change your circumstances. Instead, come up with tasks and deadlines and the steps to complete those tasks which therefore help you achieve your goal. This will help eliminate stress because you have a roadmap and a timeline of how you're going to change your life for the better. It also makes you feel productive and empowered by taking control of the situation. And lastly, goals allow you to grow. When you have goals and you become intentional with your time and your energy, it allows you to see what is most important in life and what you truly want to get out of it. Take this time to challenge yourself, set as many goals as you want, whether they're short term or long term, whether it's a personal goal, a financial goal, and a business goal, and get to it. The best time to start something was 10 years ago. The next best time is now. Comment down below what your biggest goal is for this next year. Let's put it into the universe and so we can begin manifesting great things. Okay, so let's add up these numbers to just have an idea of what's coming out total and what's coming in. So, oh, I didn't do that for this by the first budget breakdown, but that's okay. 
Um, but that's okay. So let's see. $927.30. And these numbers are estimated because the numbers can change for my income because I'm on a variable income. Um, expenses. So let's actually see how much I have for expenses. So I'm up 126, 22, 27, and 92. So I'm up $267, but I overspent last pay period, so we're gonna subtract what I overspent. So technically I'm up $74. So 74 to spend in total. So let's see if I can do that for this, and then I'll stay on track. Twenty plus eighty four plus seventy plus one twenty seventy five thirty three thirty eight seventeen thirty fifty two three ninety nine. So all this equals three hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty four cents. And the bills don't vary because that's what the bill is. The only thing that would vary is if there was an add-on. So this month, these were bills that were added on that was unexpected. Um, but now for October, I'll know to expect them. So it was 47 for time for learning, 30 for my IRS taxes that are due, and nine for Creative Fabrica. So that was $86 unexpected. Um, and then my credit cards. Oh, actually, so Capital One I don't account for because that is a gas. I use that for my gas. So that's totally separate. It's reimbursed through work. But Old Navy and a firm. So let me add them too. So 100 for Old Navy and 72.17 for a firm plus this number for the bills. So this will be the real number. So plus credit card equals fifty five five hundred fifty one and eighty one cents. So really this is the number. Okay. So we added up what the total income and the total bills and expenses would be. Um so 927.30 is the income. Subtract all of my bills. Um, let's see. And subtract um, the sinkings and savings funds, which is 66 minus 200 minus. 24 equals $85.49. So if everything works out and I only spend $74 on expenses, that, that includes all of these categories and um, there is no additional expenses anywhere else. And my income is, um, well, my income already came in for my job, which is the main number, 807. But as long as I make 120 for my side hustle, then it means I should have about $85 left over um, for some wiggle room that could be rollover for the following pay period, which would be, I guess, October 1st. So we'll see how that works out when we check in, when we close, yeah, when we check in this pay period budget breakdown and close it out and budget for the next pay period. All right, that looks good. I'm happy with that. And then please stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to cash up all of these envelopes 
and I am in the process of creating a bunch of different savings challenges. So that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment down below if any of this was helpful, where you are in your journey, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.